okay guys in this video i will discuss about bracket connection okay in industrial building if you have ever encountered any gantry girder you know that to support the gantry girder over the column you need a connection like this one okay so these are nothing but a bracket just like this okay so uh, what are the different type of bracket connection and how to design or what are the design force you need to consider these are the topic of today's video okay so if you are new to this channel please do subscribe and also don't forget to press the bell icon so that in future you can be benefited okay so let's start today's topic that is bracket connection again uh, if you are not familiar with gantry girder in that case in a gantry girder uh, what this is the gantry okay and this gantry is supported over a column okay but this column has dual function first it support the roof frame or the roof truss whatever may be and also uh, in the midpoint or at a certain depth from this eaves level it also support this whole gantry girder okay so this gantry this is known as the gantry and this supporting beam is known as the gantry girder okay but you have to support this girder over this column but as you can see here this girder is actually uh, at some distance from this central line of this column okay so if this is the uh, central line of this column okay so uh, this is the central line of the column and if this is the central line of the girder you can see that there is some eccentricity okay so to provide the support of this eccentric load you need to provide a corbel or a bracket whatever you can call it okay so i will call it a bracket and this bracket here you can see is supported by the arrangement of bolts okay you can also use weld to connect this bracket with this column i will discuss further okay so at the very first this is typical type of bracket connection also another case is uh, let's say you have some point load over a column okay and you need to provide this support okay this point load support through this flanges of the column in that case this is another type of bracket here you can see that the in previous cases this was the previous case here the load was acting along the major axis of the column okay so if this is the major axis of the column the load was acting about this major axis okay but in this case here you can see that the load is being applied along the minor axis so this is also another case where you need to provide this bracket to support this point load right so the very first case where the load is being applied along this major axis this is the major axis of the column okay so to support this bracket you can either use bolt okay or you can also use weld okay so what are the forces here simply here you can see due to this eccentric p load here at the face of this column or at this face of this column this is the load p here you will have some shear force okay you will have some shear force equals with the point load okay and also due to this eccentricity due to this eccentricity in this phase you will have some bending moment also so here also you will have some bending moment like this so what is the value of this bending moment very simple the bending moment is p times eccentricity okay so this is the bending moment now to design this connection or to design this bolt what you need to consider first you have to consider the shear force okay so let's say the shear capacity of each and every bolt is let's say uh, this is v okay and you have total shear force that is p okay so the number of bolt requires is p by v okay 
and this is not only the forces also you have to check the stress due to bending moment here okay so if you consider the bolt arrangement like this let's say here i have one two three four five five rows one two three four and five rows so this is the neutral axis so if this is the neutral axis you can find out the total moment of inertia of this arrangement okay so if the cross section of each and every bolt is a so based on the distance let's say this is r1 this is r2 you can find out the moment of inertia of the whole system and finally what is the maximum stress the maximum stress will be at the farthest bolt why because the bending moment stress distribution is like this okay so here you can see that the stress at the farthest point is maximum just like the beam if you have uh, an i section like this and if you apply the bending moment okay so what is the stress distribution it is simply like this one this is the neutral axis and the stress at the farthest fiber is maximum whether it is top or bottom doesn't matter just like that in this bolt arrangement or if it is a weld system in this case this is one side weld and this is another side weld. okay so you can find out the moment of inertia of this whole system about this neutral axis and then simply find the stresses at the farthest point okay so now you have stress due to bending moment as well as stress due to shear force so based on your codal provision if you simply check the net resultant stress is under the maximum allowable stress then your design is fine okay so what are the procedure just go back again watch the video you will find out the procedure of designing this type of bracket whether it is a welded or bolt same funder okay same force shear force same bending moment and the stress only differs because in case of a weld this is a continuous system so the calculation of moment of inertia is something like this okay so this is one rectangle this is another rectangle okay based on that you have to consider it but here this is a non continuous or discrete system so you have to calculate the moment of inertia based on individual bolt distance if cross section is a then for a particular bolt at a distance of r what is the moment of inertia about this neutral axis simply a times r square then you can find out the whole system by just summing up okay now second type so here you can see that the load is being applied about the minor axis okay so here due to this application this type of application what will happen so uh, let's say we are considering whether it is bold or weld it doesn't matter again only the difference is the calculation of the moment of inertia okay so what are the forces acting here let's say uh, this is an inclined load okay okay forget about the inclined load just for the easiness of discussion i am i am considering the vertical load so due to this vertical load p at a distance of e what is the shear force here again the shear force is p and what is the bending moment here zero why because instead of bending moment here you will have in plane bending moment or torsion okay so in previous case here you will have bending moment because the moment is being applied across this plane okay but here the moment is being applied in this plane if you consider this particular bracket this load is being divided equally in this plate and in this plate okay so just let me use some different color uh, okay so just consider this plate so here this is the point load right so due to this point load the torsion is being generated in this plate there is no bending moment 
So again, what is the torsion? So the torsion is simply P times E, okay, and shear force is simply P. So again, you can find out, just consider the bolt first. So if this is the bolting arrangement, okay, so let's say this is the bolting arrangement, then this is the neutral axis, okay, and the stress in each bolt due to shear force is uh, simply total shear force, let's say P divided by number of a bolt times the cross sectional area of the bolt okay and what is the stress due to torsion again you have to calculate the polar moment of inertia okay in previous case you need to calculate the moment of inertia but here as it is torsion so that is why you have to calculate the polar moment of inertia and to calculate the polar moment of inertia what you have to do to find out this radial distance of each and every bolt okay and you know that the maximum stress due to this torsion is at this farthest bolt what is the formula for torsional stress simply torsional stress is it is t times maximum radial distance that is r divided by the polar moment of inertia of this system that is j okay so you have got stress due to shear force as well as stress due to torsion now based on your codal provision you can check the resultant stress normally all the code have some interaction diagram due to this shear stress and bending moment or torsional stress is like this okay and just you need to satisfy this interaction diagram okay so that's it if you love this video don't forget to share it